If you are a fan of upgrading your 3D printer, especially if you have a Bamboo Lab P1S or a Bamboo Lab P1P even, or the X1C, well, this video is for you because it's been a while since I wanted to print the most used or the most downloaded AMS risers. And a huge big thanks to Polymaker who sent me the filament for this project, around 10 kilograms of Polysonic PLA Pro. Five gray spools and five black spools. If you watch some of my previous videos, you know that I'm a big fan of Polymaker, especially the Polysonic PLA Pro. But more about Polymaker later in the video. Let's not waste time, let's make it, let's print it, let's roll the video. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Alessio and this is Pixel Forge Lab. First thing first, let's get the obvious things out of the way. I already chosen my favorite AMS riser and it's right here. But we're gonna go through the reasons why I chose this one's among the others during the video and I'm gonna show you why. So long story short, a couple of years ago I started my journey with 3D printing and when I got my first P1P, I really did upgrade it all. Believe it or not, this was a P1P and now it's a full P1S because I upgraded it with the actual kit from Bamboo Lab. But before I made my own enclosure, you can check the video right here with the vision enclosure and it was fine but after a while I felt it was not flimsy but that's because after a while I got my second printer a Bamboo Lab P1S and I realized you know what it's actually really 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 cool like fully enclosed properly with the actual enclosure so I decided to buy the kit and upgraded it and I have no regrets as we know when you buy a Bamboo Lab P1S without the AMS it looks like this a really nice looking slick 3D printer, but if you want to do multicolor, you have to buy the AMS unit. And this is what it looks like with the AMS unit on top of it, without any risers which works just fine, but sometimes you have a little bit of friction with the PTFE tube on top of the glass. And also, it's a little bit difficult to remove the glass when the AMS is on top of it. And that's when the AMS risers come to play. You can search and check on makerworld.com and printables.com even. The amount of AMS riser that's out there is absolutely insane. So I couldn't really print 100 AMS risers, so I decided to go with the most downloaded, the most trendy ones available on makerworld.com. Before I show you how all the AMS riser look on top of my 3D printer, I will go through the settings on Bamboo Lab Studio on how 3D print them, all the settings for each AMS risers, how much film you're going to use and how long it's gonna take for each, and also some time lapses. So let's build them and enjoy the process. First up we have the simplest of them all, the P1S LED Air Vent Glass Riser V1 by MV3D. Link for the model in the box below. As for the settings, I used my own profile. Feel free to take a screenshot if needed. It will be printed on two plates. Will take around six hours each, roughly 13 hours, for a total of 380 grams of filament consumed. Assembly is quite easy. Just snap the parts together as shown here. Then mounting the riser on top of the P1S double checking the sturdiness and strength. You can see it does wobble a bit, but that's due to some warping coming from the plate taken from the A1. After that, just place the lead on the riser and it fits perfectly. Last, place the AMS on top of the riser and you're done. Pros and cons. Pros, it's well built and designed and the lid fits as it should, allows you to connect an LED light strip. Cons. The air vents remains open all the time. To remove the lid, you will have to move the AMS. The LED light strip might be too far from the bill plate. Next up, the one I like the least among them all. It's called Best AMS Riser for 10mm LED Strips. Easy Print by Pascal R11. Link for the model in the box below. Printing Settings. I use the same as the other one, but do take a screenshot if you like. This one will be printed on four different plates. The first two plates will take around five hours each. The third plate, the one with the logo and the little frame, will take only seven minutes. But if you feel like it, you could merge them with the front panel and use multicolor instead. The TPU gasket is the last plate and it will take three hours with the default settings, depending on what type of TPU you're using. Total printing time around 13 hours for a total of 450 grams of filament used. 
For this one we have the LED strips placement just at the bottom, which is good. Then we have two squared holes, one for the SD card and one for potential cables such as the USB for the Panda Touch. Assembly is pretty straightforward. Only the two back panels snap together, because the other ones are kept in place by the TPU gasket, which is a nice touch. The TPU gasket snap in place with the panels on their respective holes. The pins on the gasket are solid and snap into place very well. So it doesn't look that bad. Why is my last favorite? Let me show you. After mounting it, I check again for sturdiness and strength. Seems okay. Then I place the lid on top of the gasket. And I can still see the PTFE tube rubbing against the lid. After that, I place the AMS on top of the riser. Now, here is the part that I'm not a fan of. The lid wobbles a lot and tends to fold down when it's in its holder. And the AMS unit wobbles way too much. When you open and close it, it tilts way too much and doesn't feel secure. Pros and Cons Pros Another good design Easy assembly TPU gasket LED strips ready And some cables management Cons The lid tends to fold down like I said when it's in its holder. The actual AMS unit doesn't feel secure and tilts a lot. I wish there was an improvement on this because it's got potentials. Third one in the list is the Babu Duo AMS Riser Module by Willy 3D. Link for the model in the box below. Printing settings, just like the others, they are on the screen. All these parts will be printed in 7 plates. 4 plates will be normal settings, then 1 plate will be the TPU gasket, then 1 for the slider, and last, the front panel with the multicolor Bamboo Lab logo. It will take around 24 hours for all 7 plates with a total of 750 grams of filament used. Assembly for this, it is very easy, but it does require some M3 screws, specifically M3x10 and M3x8, which makes this riser unique for its sturdiness and strength, and also fun to build. Starting from the front panels, I screw them together with the M3x10 screw. Then I do the same thing with the back panels. After that, I screw them all together. Then I will apply the gasket on it. This particular gasket doesn't have pins inserts, but slides channels of some sorts. And don't do like I did. Don't forget to insert the slider first in the front panel. That's why I went back, unscrewed it, insert the slider and handle, and then rescrew them all. After that, I will screw the top part of the riser, which is a separate piece, where the AMS and the LED strip slide will lodge. Also, this riser is modular. On the page you will find many, many add-ons for it. Some free, some paid. But I'm not sure if it's worth it. As usual, I'll place it on the P1S. Check in stability and it is pretty stable. Then, I place the AMS on it and it feels great and it looks great too. The vent is a smart touch. But I didn't like the round corners on the back, not matching the ones from the AMS. So let's get into the pros and cons. Pros Design-wise is probably the best looking. Easy and fun to build, LED strip ready, TPU gasket, very sturdy and modular. Cons The TPU gasket is a bit hard to mount. I prefer the pins. Round corners not matching the AMS, paid add-ons. At number 4 we have the AMS Riser V2 remixed by MACYO4, probably one of the most downloaded risers on MakerWorld.com, with a whooping 36,000 downloads. Let's see why. Printing settings once again like the others, used my own profile, still on the screen. These will be printed in more than 10 plates. The pieces are pretty big and on the print profile on MakerWorld.com there are many many options for P1S and X1C. Plus, it's extremely customizable, so I will give you a rough estimate. It will take over 60 hours to print all the parts and roughly 2 kilograms of filament, quite heavy. 
The main four parts are numbered, but it's pretty easy to snap them in place. Then we have the side panels, which will hold it together. Then the drawers with the respective knobs. Front panel for SD card and cable management with respective covers. And finally, the TPU gasket. Assembly for this one is actually really fun. No hardware needed, maybe some glue if you fancy. Just snap the front panels together, then the back panels. After that, there is a small piece that will hold the back together and finally hold the four pieces together. And here you can see the LED strip angled sides. Then I snap the panels in place for better design, but also better strength. The drawers are also fully customizable. On that page, you will find many, many customization. But for this, just snap the knobs in place with some glue if you like. Slide them into the riser and you're done. Last but not least, the front panels snap together. And the covers too. Also, I would put some glue on this one too. Both covers and the panels to the main one. And last, I will place and snap the TPU gasket on the main body very easily. Like the others, I will place it on top and see how stable and strong it is. And it seems great. Then I place the AMS on the riser. Check that the drawers still slide. And here you can see some of the add-ons for the drawers, which I think is a bit overkill, but you may find it useful. Then I place the lid on the gasket and test it on the holder and place a couple of build plates on their places. Here you can see a couple of the many mods add-ons you can add. For example, this spool holder, it's very nice. And this scraper holder too. I wanted to mention that if you own a Panda Touch, there are a couple of different options. One is the modified version that I made and the second one is a combo which works just too. Link in the description. Now let's see the pros and cons. Pros. Amazing design. Stable. Extremely customizable. Multifunctional. Great TPU gasket. Great LED strip holder. Very easy to assemble. Cons. After 6 months of use, the weight of the AMS will start sinking the main body. See the photo of my old one here. It's very expensive to print too much filament and it's missing the indentation for the Panda Touch, non-default setup. Finally, at number 5, my favorite, the AMS Glass Slider Riser version 5 by Sanja 3D. With only 4000 downloads, I think this is one of the best risers I've tried. Printing settings, exactly as all the others, take a screenshot if you like. This will be printed in only 3 plates, for a total of 9 hours and a half, only using 330 grams of filament, which is really good. Assembly is very very easy, just snap the back panels together, do the same for the front ones, and then connect them together with the clever snap-on system. Here is a close-up of how it would look like with the LED strip mounted on. Then connect the LED strips with their corners. They are all labeled. Then put the pins in each of the feet and you're done. In here we have no gasket. Placing the riser on the P1S feels very stable. Then placing the AMS unit on top and try the open and closing feature, which I really love. And finally, trying the sliding glass feature too, and it works a treat. If you have the Panda Touch, it fits just right. I'm just having fun with this one and here from another angle. Final pros and cons. Pros. Lightweight. Easy to build. Discreet but nice design. Lid slides very well. Open and closes perfectly. Cons. Missing TPU gasket, but not essential. Feet are too much of a tight fit. Should be slightly taller for better upon the touch integration. I hope you enjoyed the building process and the assembly as much as I did. And now I'm gonna show you how they look on top of the 3D printers. So this is the P1S with no AMS risers right here. And this is what it looks like with the AMS riser number one. And this is what it looks like with AMS riser number two. And next, this is how it looks with AMS riser number three. And this is AMS riser number four. 
and last, the gray version of the AMS riser that I use every day, AMS riser number five. And now back to the black version, the one that I use every day. And before I end the video, I just want to spend a couple of words for Polymaker. Meet Polysonic PLA Pro, the next generation of PLA for high-speed printing. Engineered for speed and strength, it delivers rugged, durable parts with impact resistance close to ABS and bending strength that outperforms PETG and ASA. With a printing speed up to 300 mm per second, you get precision and toughness without sacrificing quality. Polysonic PLA Pro. When time is critical, performance is everything. All right, this was a really fun project to make, especially building them and assembling them. It was really, really fun. This project was overdue for a very long time because I was busy doing something else. Let's see if you know what I'm talking about. And I haven't had one single failure with this Polysonic PLA Pro. Absolutely amazing filament. You should check it out in the link in the box below. If you enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed making it, please do consider to subscribe if you're not like the video and do comment down below which AMS riser you're using or if you're planning to 3D print a new one based on this video, I would really like to know which one you're going to pick. Again, thank you so much for watching. My name is Alessio, this is Pixel Forge Lab and I'll catch you on the next one.